our last section of chapter five is the substitution rule. So this is a method used to integrate when we don't know the antiderivative of a function. Okay, so if you look at the example I have here, we cannot, looking at this, there's no rule to find the antiderivative of this function, um, especially because it's the product of 2x and the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, so the u substitution, that's what we're going to do, um, allows us to find the antiderivative, basically, or find the integral of a function that I couldn't do any other way. Okay, um, I'm going to go through and do it here, and then I'll go through the definition of it. Okay, so the idea is you're going to substitute, we always use the variable u. We're going to substitute u for the um, basically inside part. So in this problem, I'm going to let u be 1 plus x squared. Okay, so I'm just assigning a different variable to 1 plus x squared. Now, if you go and find the derivative of u, so the derivative du dx, which guys way back remember, is just the derivative of u in terms of x, would be equal to what? 2x. Okay, now look over here. Oh, look it, 2x appears in the problem. That's what will always happen. So whatever you let u be, the derivative of that will be the other um, quantity in the problem so that you can substitute. So now by just playing a little bit, here's what u is, the 1 plus x squared, okay? And the 2x dx is what's left. So now if I just take this and I multiply both sides by dx, I would have 2x dx. So 2x dx is du, and u is 1 plus x squared. So now look at what this turns into. The, the square root of u by substituting u in for 1 plus x squared, and then the 2x dx just turns into du. How nice. Now you can actually integrate that. We know how to find the antiderivative of the square root of u. Okay, the square root of u is just u to the 1 half, so we would get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then the last step is now just plug 1 plus x squared back in for u. So my final answer is two-thirds, one plus x squared to the three halves plus a. You plug what u stood for back in so your answer is in terms of x. Okay, so kind of cool. Now this will only work when the derivative of what you let u be is the other part of the problem. Okay, so when integrating the composition of functions, that's basically what we're doing, you must have the derivative of the inside function as part of the integral. Okay, so this is composition because you have the square root of 1 plus x squared. So you have outside and inside basically here. Um, the substitution rule here written, if I want to take the integral of f of g of x. So think about g of x really is always your u. The inside of the composition is always your u. And then the derivative of that will always appear as the other part in the integral. Okay, and that's all this is saying. You can substitute it with u. Now we just need to do examples. Um, the hardest part is probably figuring out what u should be so that it's going to work out. Okay, but if you think, it's always the inner part, inside part. Okay, so number one, um, I'm going to let u be x squared minus plus two. That's the inside. Okay, and now look, if you're thinking ahead, what's the derivative of that? The derivative of that is 4x cubed, and look at x cubed appears here. Okay, so then you go to find the derivative of du, which is du over dx. That's just the derivative of u in terms of x. We're finding the derivative of u in terms of x, and that's 4x cubed. Okay, now what? Now you've got to think, well, what's in my problem? So this is going to be u. What's left? x cubed dx. So I need this. I need to solve for x cubed dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx and get rid of that 4. So if I divide both sides by 4, I would have 1 fourth du equals x cubed dx. Now I can substitute everything. Now I can go back to my integral and I can say this is the same thing as the cosine of u, because this is u, 
times what? One fourth du by substitution. Because the x cubed dx is one fourth du, and then the cosine of x to the fourth plus two would be cosine of u. Now I'm just going to come over here for space. Okay, where can you put that one fourth? We can write that in front of the integral. Now you can integrate. Okay, what's the integral of cosine is sine, so I'd have one fourth sine of u plus c, and then make sure to go back and plug in what you stood for in the beginning to get your final answer in terms of x. So it's one fourth sine of x to the fourth plus two plus c. Okay? All right, next one. Number two. Okay. Um, so let's think. The inside to this would be the 2x plus 1. So I'm going to let u be 2x plus 1. So du dx is going to just be what? 2. Now in the problem, here's my u, and all I have left is dx. So I have to solve this for dx. So what? Multiply both sides by dx. Divide by 2. So I would have 1 half du equals dx. Okay, so now go ahead and substitute. So the integral would turn into this, uh, the square root of u times dx is 1 half du. Okay, take the 1 half, put it in front, and now you can integrate and then plug your quantity back in. So the 1 half stays. The integral of the square root of u is what? 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, and then what do you get here? Just one third, plug u back in, which is 2x plus 1, 3 halves plus c. There's your answer. Okay, so not bad. Again, it's just practicing um, what u stands for. So I have a bunch of examples, I think, to go through. Yep, four more on this page. Move this up a little bit. All right. So, next one, inside function. So the inside would be the 1 minus 4x squared. So I'm going to let u be 1 minus 4x squared. Find the derivative of that. du in terms of dx is going to be equal to what? Negative 8x. Now figure out what you're going to substitute. Okay, so here you're going to have u. What's left, I box in, is x dx. So here I want to get x dx by itself to know what to plug that plug in for that. Okay, so go ahead and get x dx by itself and it would be equal to negative 1 eighth du equals x dx. Multiply both sides by dx, divide by the negative 8. Okay, so now substitute. I would have what? The square root of u would be in the denominator. The x dx is equal to negative 1 eighth du. So I could just write a 1 here. Okay, you can write the negative 1 eighth in front. The 1 over the square root of u is the same thing as u to the negative 1 half power. Now integrate and plug back in. Leave the negative 1 eighth outside. Integrate u to the negative 1 half. And it would be add 1, so you get what? 1 half divided by 1 half, so you'd have 2 u to the 1 half plus c. So here's the integral, here's the antiderivative of that. And then plug in the, what did u stand for? 1 minus 4x squared um, plus c. Oops, to the 1 half, sorry. And then you could simplify this a little bit. So I would have negative 1 fourth times the square root of 1 minus 4x squared plus c just by simplifying that answer. Okay, good. Next, the integral of e to the 5x. So if I use u substitution, I'd let u be 5x. du over dx is equal to just 5. Okay, so here's u. The only thing left is the dx. So solve this for dx. So what? dx would equal 1 fifth du. So plug in, so I'd have e to the u times 1 fifth du. 
bring the one fifth in front. What's the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c, and then plug in what u stood for to start with. Now, here's a rule that you might just remember. Okay, the integral of e to the 5x is always just going to be 1 fifth e to the 5x. So the integral of e to the 7x is just going to be e to the 7x times 1 seventh. The integral of e to the 9x would be 1 ninth times e to the 9x. You can use u substitution, or here's one that's just going to come up a lot, and you might just know that without using u substitution. Uh, number five. Looking at that, um, inside function would be the 1 plus x squared. I'm going to let u be 1 plus x squared. du dx is going to be, what's the derivative of that? 2x. Okay. So that's all fine. So I have 1 plus x squared. I have 2x. Now, we have a problem. When I go back to the original, this is u and I have x to the fifth dx. I don't know what x to the fifth equals, okay? That's not here at all. So the dx, I can easily say equals what? The dx I can, um, you can solve for, and the, the x I can leave, okay? So I could say, um, if I just take this, and I would have, what, dx times x, so bring it here and divide by 2, equals 1 half du. But the problem is it's not x, it's x to the fifth. So this one's a little tricky. You have an extra x to the fourth in there. Okay, so I'm going to see if you follow this. Square root of 1 plus x squared, I'm going to write this as x to the fourth times x dx. Now the x dx is easy. That's equal to 1 half du. This is u. What about x to the fourth in terms of u? Well, you can go back to here and you can say if u equaled 1 plus x squared, then x squared would equal u minus 1. Okay? So square both sides, x to the fourth would be u minus 1 squared. Tricky. But when you have an extra, this is how I like to say it, x or x to a power, you're going to have to do that. Okay, so now I can substitute. This would be the square root of u. x to the fourth is u minus 1 squared. And then x dx is 1 half du. So that's what it all turns into in terms of u's. Now before I can integrate that, I'd have to simplify this. So I can bring the 1 half in front. I have to simplify u to the 1 half times... Um, u minus 1 squared, FOIL. The square root of u is u to the 1 half. Now distribute each term. Okay, so I'd have to distribute that before I can integrate. So we would get what? 1 half times 2 is u to the 5 halves minus 2u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half. Now you can finally integrate each term and then plug u back in. Okay, so I'd have 1 half in front. And I would have, what, 2 sevenths u to the 7 halves minus, um, what would that turn into? I would have 2 times, if I had 2, I would have 5 halves, so 2 fifths here, u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then, finally, I have 1 half. Um, you could actually distribute these. I will, just to save. So 1 half times 2 sevenths would be 1 seventh. And I would plug what u stood for, 1 plus x squared, to the 7 halves. Okay, This would just be minus 2 fifths when you distribute the 1 half. 1 plus x squared to the 5 halves plus um, one-third, one plus x squared to the three-halves, plus c. Wow. That's probably the hardest it's going to get where you have an extra x like that, and you just have to be a little clever uh, with your substitution. All right, last one.
Oh no, I have two more on here. Um, tangent of x. Okay, so the first thing is you're thinking, well, I have no idea what I can let u be because I just have tangent. Well, we can change tangent to sine over cosine. Okay, and now I can let u be cosine because the derivative of cosine is what? Negative sine. So now when you come over here, this is going to be your u. And then sine dx, I want to get by itself. So negative du would equal sine of x dx. Okay, so sine of x dx is equal to negative du. And cosine's u. So this would turn into 1 over u times negative du. I can just take the negative, put it in front. Okay. And now it differentiate. So I'd have negative derivative, uh, antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log um, plus c, and then plug cosine back in. You may, again, this might be one worth remembering. The antiderivative of tangent is the negative natural log of cosine plus c. Also written as natural log of secant plus c. Why? Because this negative I could put as a power with your log rules, okay? And 1 over cosine is secant. I don't know, you know, just by using your rules, okay? And then the last one I have on here, x times, whoops, x minus 1 cubed. Okay, so here you're going to let what? u be the inside function. So I would let u be x minus 1 here. du dx, the derivative of that is just 1. So now here we go again. I have, this is going to be u. Okay, dx is just equal to du in this case. So this is taken care of. You have an extra x. Go back to your u statement. Solve for x. What is x equal? x equals u plus 1. So now I can plug in u plus 1 for that extra x. So I'd have the integral of u plus 1 times u to the third times du. Okay. Now I would simplify, I would distribute first. So I'd have u to the fourth plus u to the third du. Then I can integrate. Pretty straightforward. I'll come down here, I'm sorry. So I'd have u to the fifth over five plus u to the fourth over four plus c. And then last step, I would plug in the x minus one for u. So I would have x minus one to the fifth over five plus x minus one to the fourth over four plus c. Again, number seven is like uh, that number five with the extra x in there. Okay.